Hey everybody, Mr. Smith here in my kitchen, recording a video on finding the length of a line segment. So just like we've found uh, formulas where we can take coordinates to one coordinate, another coordinate, we know how to find their slope and we know how to find the midpoint of between those two coordinates. Well, today we're going to find out how to find the length or distance between uh, two points or the length of a line segment. Let's get started. Um, so <clears throat> uh, we're going to uh, look at this problem here. So maybe a bit of a, a simplified problem, but applicable. So Jan and Tara, they're planning a canoe trip in Georgian Bay. And we've overlaid a coordinate system on top of uh, this region, uh, which is um, uh, done in practice. Um, so very, again, very applicable. So uh, we've uh, overlaid a grid, a plane, a Cartesian plane, so that they're launching their canoe from the point 22 on their map. They're going to camp at point B, which is at 65 on the map. And then they are going to um, camp uh, for the second night at uh, point C, uh, 71. So they're going to paddle from A to B and then from B to C. And we would like to know how far they're paddling all together. Um, what we can do uh, in this question, uh, I think let's assume that each square is one kilometer. Just to make things easy, stating our distances. Um, so how can we do that? Well, let's go to the next slide here, and um, uh, let's uh, pl plot points A and B on maybe a Cartesian plane, a grid that we're more used to used to working with. And we're going to make a right angle between them, and I'm going to show you guys why that's helpful. So point A is at the point 2, 2. And if you're just taking notes at home, like in a notebook, a rough sketch, it will be just fine here. And point B is the point six, five. There's point A, there's point B, and there's the a line joining them, representing the distance between them. And I'm just gonna complete a little right angle triangle here. Um, so let's talk about how to find the length. So I'm gonna use um, I'll use D, a lowercase d, and with a subscript AB to indicate I'm finding the distance between points A and B. Um, sometimes I might use a lowercase l for length. It might depend on the application, but this length, distance, same thing. So here I'll use a lowercase d. How do we find the distance between AB? Well, if you look at this diagram, we've made a right angle triangle, right? And you guys actually know how to find sides in right angle triangles. Um, do you guys remember the, the formula, right? C squared equals A squared plus B squared, right? Where C squared, C is the hypotenuse and A and B are the two short sides called the legs. Well, here we have our two short sides, right? We've graphed this out so we can visually actually see what the length of these two short sides are. The run between these two points, it's easy just to visualize. It's four units, or in this case, four kilometers. And the rise is equal to three. So if we use the Pythagorean theorem, that distance between them, again, I've represented that by D with a subscript AB, we can use Pythagorean theorem, right? That distance squared is the run squared plus the rise squared. That's just Pythagorean theorem that you guys have been working with for a while in your math careers. And we can plug in what we know. The run is four. The rise is three. Uh, four squared plus three squared, that's 16 plus nine. So that's 25. So remember, that's not the distance. That's the, um, the distance squared. So we have to do one more thing here. To get our distance, we just need to square root. 25. And so the distance between those two points 
are five kilometers. So the two friends from their launching point to campsite, the campsite at B, they have to paddle five kilometers. And all we did was use Pythagorean theorem. Now this first one wasn't so bad because we could easily plot those points and it was really easy to see the rise and run. They were all small positive numbers. It was no problem just to do the mental math there, right? But that's not always gonna be true. The numbers could be big, we could have decimals or fractions, and it might just not be practical to graph. So what we need is a formula that we can just use um, and that works all the time. We could just use the formula without having to make a graph. And so we're gonna do that for points B and C. We're gonna do the same thing, but instead of just using rise and run in Pythagorean theorem, we're gonna kind of develop a formula as we go. So uh, let me just get B and C on here. So it's six, five point B and seven one is point C. And I'm gonna just gonna label the points in here. It's six five and it's seven one. And I might just slip slip to a different color. When we're using the slope formula or the midpoint formula, we always have an X1 and an X2 and a Y1 and a Y2, right? So I'm gonna call point B, I'm gonna call that my point one and just X1, Y1, and point B is X2 and Y2. <clears throat> I think maybe in the future I might just actually chop off the other quadrants here because we're not even using them, not a huge deal. So I'm gonna make a little right wrangle triangle. <clears throat> And uh, this time, you know, instead of just, we, I, I know that we can see what the rise and run is. It's, it's not a difficult one to visualize. Um, let's just remember that the, to get the rise, we actually had know how to get the rise using two points, right? We take the Y values and we subtract them, Y2 minus Y1. And to get the run, we subtract the Xs, X2 minus X1. So I know that we can just read off the rise and the run four and one, but let's actually just develop a formula here. Uh, so the uh, distance between points B and C, that distance squared, it's hypotenuse, is equal to the, again, it's the run squared plus the rise squared. And if I do a couple things at once here, so remember, so to get the distance between B and C, Ultimately, we take a big square root. We're going to square root everything we do. We're going to take the square root. To get the run, we do x2 minus x1 squared. And to get the rise, we do y2 minus y1 squared. We already knew that. We knew that from finding slope. And act, lo and behold, this is actually the formula that gives you length or distance between two points. Given two points, x1 and y1. <laughs> That was my washing machine. Um, between for two points, x1, y1, x2, y2, that's how you get the rise, that's how you get the run. And using Pythagorean theorem, this is a formula you can use to get the length. And then moving forward, we won't have to draw out a diagram. We'll just plug our values into a formula, like into this formula specifically. So let's get some practice doing that. So I've called x2, 7 and x1, 6. So 7 minus 6 squared and y2 and uh, minus y1. y2 is 1 minus 5. And we just have to finish it off. And you can kind of do this in um, <clears throat> many steps or you can shave off a few steps. The something you, many of you will have to be careful of is, you know, when you uh, square a negative number, you get a positive, right? So one squared is one, negative four squared is 16. And so you get the root of 17, which is nice and exact. But, you know, let's find out um, how many kilometers that is by taking the root of 17. And that's about, we'll just go to the nearest kilometer or tenth of a kilometer. No big deal. It's so about 4.1 kilometers. And we got it by using, by developing and using a formula. But I wanna stress, we literally did the same thing we did in A, except we kind of generalized it and got a formula. In our conclusion, the total distance traveled, 
between the two friends. The total distance traveled, traveled two L's or one L? I don't know, it doesn't matter. Is, well, they did five kilometers in their first leg plus 4.1 kilometers in their second leg. So about 9.1 kilometers altogether. And that's what we're doing today, guys. We are just getting experience calculating links. And given the formula, it's not too bad as long as you're just careful with all the arithmetic. Just be careful with negatives and just be careful with the squaring. We should be great. Let's try another problem. Uh, so here, so as I've mentioned, uh, machinists, tool and die, millwrights, any part that they're designing, any machinery that they're designing, and even actually whole uh, rooms or maybe even small factories, they have kind of entered into a computer program where they can have 2D, visualize it in 2D or three dimensions. And so here we have a coordinate system uh, overlaid on top of a, uh, a cam. Um, I don't pretend to know. I know a cam. I know a cam shaft is part of a car, but I literally have no idea what a cam does. I don't know what it does. However, so we have this part, and we need to punch um, uh, mounting holes uh, to mount this part onto something at points A and B. Um, and uh, we want to find how how far apart these centers are. We need to know. We need to be precise. So the machinist can program this. The person who actually has to carry it out, knows exactly what to do. So let's do it. Uh, if you'd like, um, you can write the coordinates of A. So A is at the point minus three, um, minus three positive five. And if you wanna call that your X1, Y1, that's not necessary, but you know, as I often say, it can be helpful for people just to get their minds kind of organized, and that's two minus four for B, and we'll call that X2, Y2. The distance between those two holes, that A and B, we're gonna use our formula, big root, and I'm gonna write it out. So as you practice more and more, you don't necessarily need to write out the formula every time. You can go right to the step where you plug in. So guys, it's just plug and play. We're just using the formula. So X2 is two, and let's be careful. X1 is negative three. So we are subtracting negative three plus Y2 is negative four, and we are subtracting five. So it's just like we did before. The only thing is just be careful with the negatives. Show as many steps as you need to. Uh, two subtract negative three is like two plus three, that's five, five squared. Negative four subtract five is negative nine, negative nine squared. I have more square root than I need. And that's 25 plus 81. So that gives you the root of 106. Be careful, negative nine squared is not negative 81. And there are people, those of you are going to do that. And it, I mean, it's just an honest mistake. But yeah, you, when you square something, you can't get a negative. And those people who do get a negative are gonna do 25 minus 81 and get negative 56. And you're gonna be trying to root a negative number, which is impossible. Um, so just please be mindful of, of um, those operations with integers. Um, so the root of 106, we're done. We just have to do that. Um, that looks probably is gonna be about like 10.3 or something. No, I'm gonna say 10.2. Okay, I should have stuck with my gut, 10.3. And the uh, units in this question were stated in the problem. So it's 10.3 centimeters. So yeah, just finding the length between two points, the, motive, the, the background, the motivation is Pythagorean theorem. And we just use rise and run and our formulas for those to create an equation for distance. We just gotta get used to using it. One more example, guys, and we're done. Pretty short lesson today. So uh, we're going to compare distances in this problem. So um, 
uh, Ontario, I think it's, I don't know if it's Canada, but Ontario has a system of um, medical helicopters, air ambulances called Orange, um, but they might use a system like this to help, you know, plan out routes. So coordinates in this grid are kilometers. And then this grid is such that a reference point in the lower left corner is zero, zero. So we have, what we have is a patient at a point 96, 197. So that's 96 kilometers east of our reference point and 197 kilometers north. So there's two hospitals that can provide help. One is at uh, in Timmins and at the point we have here, 200, 296. And the other is at in Sudbury, and we have that point there, 232 and 80. Now, perhaps, because that's not that's a fairly accurate diagram, you could perhaps eyeball it. I don't even know if I could eye. It looks like possibly Timmins is shorter just by eyeballing it, but that certainly we can't really tell. So what we should do is we should find which hospital is closer. And fortunately, we have the tools to do that. We can find the distances. So you guys need to do two things. You guys need to find the distance from our patient to the Timmins Hospital. And you also need to find the distance from the patient to the Sudbury Hospital. Let's do that and find out which one's closer. And then we'll talk about some assumptions for this problem. So if you'd like to pause the video and just do it and just fast forward and check your answer, that's totally fine. <clears throat> so I'm gonna call uh, point P, X1, Y1, and I'm gonna call Timmins X2, Y2. And then when I when I use, when I use find the distance from the patient to, the, uh, to, to Sudbury, I'll use that as my X2, Y2 as well. I'm never finding the distance between Timmins and Sudbury, so this shouldn't be a big problem. Never a bad idea to write out the formula, although some of you guys already may be getting comfortable enough that you don't need to write the formula out. You can just go right to plugging in, which is totally fine. And again, I'm assuming that you've paused it and you've tried it, so I can work a little bit faster because you're just kind of checking an answer, right? Um, I don't think I'll be able to do mental math with this problem. So we've got 296 minus, uh, nope, 200 minus 96. And squared plus uh, the y's, 296 uh, minus 197. And guys, we just got to carry it out. So, I mean, do it in a lot of steps, do it in a little bit amount of steps. That's 104 squared. 296 minus 90, 197. I believe that's 99. And I'm going to do that. All at once, it's going to give me a big number. I'm going to double check 296 minus 197. It's a bit late at night for doing mental math. It is 99. 104 squared plus 99 squared gives you 20,617, which is exact. But let's get the approximate answer in kilometers. Let's go root that. I got about 143.6 kilometers. And this is to Timmins. And I'm gonna do a similar thing and find the distance to the Sudbury Hospital. I'm gonna write out my formula. More for your guys' sake than my sake. You know, if you need to do that to get your mind right, then do it. So we got X2 is 232 here. So 232 minus 96 squared plus so the run is bigger i can tell that but the rise 80 minus 197 um that's gonna be yeah that looks i'm i'm thinking this is gonna be bigger but let's finish it off uh that's 136 squared and negative 117 squared which gives us, uh, and I'm going to double check those values, 
Uh, yeah, 136, negative 117. Of course I'm right. And don't forget, when you square negative 117, it should be a positive. So the root of 32,185. So we can tell it's going to, it's obviously farther to Sudbury. Taking the square root, it's 179.4 kilometers. So we can for sure say, go here. Now, part B in that we've, we've done part A, we've um, found the distance between both from the patient to each uh, hospital and found that it's shorter to Timmins. So we say, hey, go to Timmins. Now there could be some factors that, you know, would make it actually more reasonable to go to Sudbury. Uh, for example, maybe there's, and I'm not, I'm not saying this is true in Ontario, but maybe in other parts of the world, maybe there's like a mount, there's, there's, there's some mountain ranges or dangerous terrain to fly over that you might have to go around and not take a direct route and it actually might fly longer to Timmins. We're assuming that you go in a straight line. Uh, we're also assuming that they can fly at the same speed to both. You know, if there's poor weather from um, uh, the patient to Timmins, maybe they can fly in a straight line, but they have to fly slower. Uh, whereas it's all clear to Sudbury and they can fly faster. So there's other, other considerations too. But if all you consider is the, the, the shortest point to point distance, we would go to Timmins. It makes the most sense. Uh, so um, you guys just need to practice this a bit. You want to get pretty comfortable just quickly whipping off distances using this formula. We've got a lot of examples in the books now. And what we're going to do next is a really interesting problem. Um, in uh, a lot of construction applications, like for example, building a whole bunch of new houses, you've got to connect those houses to the water line and the power line. And those water lines and power lines are often running in straight lines. So when you're hooking things up to a house, you want to use as little like wiring and piping as possible. You want the most direct route. So we're going to find how to find the most direct path from a line to a specific spot. This is the, the concept of finding the shortest path from a point to a line. So it should be fun. We'll do a couple examples together. And then I believe I'll have a short task for you guys to try doing that on your own. But that's for next time. Until then, hope you're staying well. Have a great day or night. And we'll see you guys soon.